Hi everybody, this is Cenk uh, from Contract Project. Uh, you may remember it uh, from, uh, from 2014 already, two years ago, we started this project with Akon and Aletin Günch uh, to create an independent platform to make uh, design discussions or any kind of creative discussion related to the design fields. Um, it is not sponsored, it is not uh, heavily mediated, so it is in a way uh, open to uh, any kind of contribution. Um, and last time uh, I was in Stockholm and we uh, introduced you input of the, of the uh, graduate school students of um, uh, Kormstvak. And at that time we talked about um, social and some social entrepreneurial projects at the same time um, hip hop uh, grassroots movement in USA. It was so interesting, by the way. You can check it out on uh, on, on our contract page. And uh, this time I am in uh, Paris, even though you see me in a uh, in front of a white wall. So it can be basically everywhere I know. But uh, I will show you the uh, place later on uh, where I right now uh, this where I do right now this broadcast. Basically, uh, I am involved in Paris, and uh, this series of broadcasts will focus on food innovation. I have Shirley Haston. Hi, Shirley. Hi. <laughs> I hope you're fine. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Um, with Shirley, uh, I would like to uh, start this series of uh, talks by uh, by starting to talk about. Um, Basically, Kirk Project, um, she's a co-founder of Kirk Project and, um, and the term food innovation and uh, whatever she is doing, wherever she is, <laughs> basically. And uh, yeah, because uh, it's quite complicated. Um, we are doing this a series of broadcasts uh, projects uh, in collaboration with Kirk Project from Istanbul, um, even though Kirk Project seems like based in uh, Istanbul, uh, the contributors of the project travel a lot. Uh, yes. Right now, Semi Hakim is in uh, Melbourne, and you are, where are you? I'm in uh, Reggio Emilia, Italy. Although you cannot also understand from the white wall behind me, <laughs> I'm in Italy. You should, yeah, 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 we should change this generic background for sure. Yes. Or, or add some kind of green screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know, yeah, but we, we have to, we have to solve it out. Um, but surely, can you, can you, you know, shortly describe what Cook Project is all about from your own perspective, uh, first of all? Oh. <clears throat> okay. This, uh, this is a simple and a very hard one because it can change from one person to another one. My perspective is, uh, actually, we want to um, make change through food, but we want to make it uh, sustainable. How, what it means. You cannot turn back. Everybody most probably saw the movie uh, Butterfly Effect. You cannot turn back entirely. So if you want to uh, improve something, starting from now on, you have to find a way and your way. Uh, it also means that you cannot take something from the United States or uh, in my... Um, Right now I'm in Italy. I cannot take something from Italy and I cannot uh, take it back to Turkey entirely. I have to uh, take it and interpret it and um, find a way how it will work in Turkey. This is what I, um, what I get from the innovation, food innovation. Um, and right now I'm in Reggio Emilia. I'm studying because uh, if you want to go forward, you have to be in a continuous education. Um, a student of uh, Unimore, um, Modena and Reggio Emilia University, uh, in the food innovation. It's uh, collaborated with Future Food Institute and they are also uh, collaborated with uh, Institute for uh, Institute for Future. Okay. Institute for Future. It sounds, it sounds futuristic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. But they're not dealing only with food, they're dealing with lots of stuff, but Institute for um, 
Future Food Institute, it's uh, uh, mostly uh, focused on food. So what you do there is a program, because uh, it can be also quite informative for the people who are watching this, who have uh, any kind of interest in it. So you, you are attending, um, I don't know, whole year program, two years program, is it a certificate program or it's like a graduate school in total uh, when we look at the, um, you know. It's a, it's a master degree in the science. Uh, in uh, Unimore, it's again uh, Modena and Reggio uh, Emilia University, and um, actually it has uh, three parts. The first part, you are um, they're giving you all the information. The second part, we will go to a global tour. Uh, we will go to each country that is specialized in uh, one topic, or it can be more than one topic, and uh, we will see how it's done in that country. It mean, meaning we will go to, and this is the one of the best parts for me, we will go to Shanghai, <laughs> Kyoto, <laughs> Singapore, and the United States in uh, several places, UC Davis, Silicon Valley, uh, Boston, and then we will go to Netherlands for um, Wigan uh, University, and uh, then we will come back and we will work on our own project. So in each uh, country, you're, uh, you should uh, find the collaborators um, for you to dive in your own uh, area of expertise. Because my friends, my, uh, my friends from the university, they have, uh, um, they're very diverse. They're coming from different countries, Venezuelan, Brazilian, Indian, American, um, Egyptian, <laughs> they have different uh, backgrounds by uh, countries and also different backgrounds on education, chemical engineer, food scientist, food designer, um, chemical engineer, electrical engineer, they have broad um, view of uh, what they can do with food. Uh, so. so this, this is also creates some kind of quite vibrant environment to to discuss on the term innovation, I guess, right? To have yeah. background. Exactly. So, uh, be before getting deeper into this topic innovation, let's say, or you know, any kind of innovation related to food, maybe you can give also slightly more uh, information about Cook Project. How it start, what do you do there, or how it works, basically? Because, um, as I said, you know, I, I don't want to describe the, uh, how it looks like for me uh, or collaborators, but you are the uh, found co founders of the project, basically. So you deal with uh, documentation, you uh, organize uh, workshops, you make collaborations with uh, municipalities, uh, even related to food, as far as I know. So maybe you can give some more information about that too, so people can check it out. Uh, okay. Um, there are different aspects of the uh, Kirk project, and one of them is uh, uh, the facts and the knowledge. So, everybody, uh, Kirk project is open to everybody. So, if you want to be, if you want to be a part of Kirk project, and you have a, a specific subject in your mind, you can uh, you can come and. Uh, the thing that we do is uh, basically we are sharing the knowledge of um, people that knows that uh, subject the best so that we can pair you with the, those people. And uh, what you want, what we ask for um, taking back is the knowledge that you gather from these people and uh, write a blog or an article about it and uh, share it with the um, public. So this is the knowledge part of it. And we are also continuously um, learning something from different people different in, in different places. It can be a food, it can be a technique, it, it can be um, just an idea. Because ideas are really important, but what, what is more important than that, it's uh, to make something with that uh, information. So uh, we are working in, uh, in Istanbul with the municipality because, uh, as I said, uh, right now Turkey is, uh, I'm not going to describe it as a problem, but um, 
there's a big gap what to do with the immigrants. So uh, we started a project with the Izmir uh, municipality, Tarih Tasarım Atölyesi. We are trying to build a kitchen for the uh, immigrants that they can uh, make their own um, food in a hygienic place and sell and uh, they can gain their economic uh, independence. So th th this is one of the things that uh, we are trying to not monetize, but um, um, take, uh, take the ideas and put it into something that is visible and uh, alive. Yeah. And you have also a project called Ash Project, right? Yes, this is the fun part. <laughs> so uh, what is the uh, with Ash Project, again, idea, knowledge, we learned about a uh, fungus, we learned about something that, that can be introduced to people. But how you can introduce, you cannot just show a picture of it and say that, okay, this is the new or the ancient uh, grain that we uh, found in um, Anatolia. Okay, this is what they, everybody will read it and most probably they will forget it. But if we can make a, a food, something edible out of it and it, uh, you can use it and show you how to use it, it's something else. So we are trying to um, this events that uh, you can come, you can enjoy, you can meet with uh, new people and uh, you can learn small things. I mean, at least we know, we hope that you can uh, learn a few things that you can uh, take it back home with you. Sounds good. Uh, I know some of it. Uh, I just ask questions to, uh, to, to inform more people who are going oh, to If uh, you want to ask these uh, same questions to Semi, the yeah. answer is going to be uh, completely different. But this is my aspect. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's good then. So it, will, it won't be some kind of repetitive, uh, you know, similar questions and uh, similar answers at the end. Yeah, yeah. also for Ash Project is for me. It's, uh, I'm also working as a chef. For me, the, a place that uh, I can explore, so uh, I can um, I can make uh, different risottos with different grains. And uh, for me, the part, the fun part is the try and error because yeah. not every grain you can make a, a risotto out of it. And uh, I can make it in a place that is, uh, if I will fail, nobody will see it. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, but uh, tell me about your background, maybe. A little bit more. Because, oh. uh, are you trained as a chef, or, or no? Or, or, or how how life? How how was your life until now? Okay, how was my life? I have a very diverse background. I'm a curious person, so I change a lot of jobs. I I change a lot a lot of uh, uh, industries also. Uh, it, the age of eighteen, uh, after I graduated from the high school. Um, I, start, I studied economics as, a, as an undergrad. I was always good with numbers. And um, during the time that I was, work, uh, I was studying, I started to work in the uh, university as a clerk. Then I changed uh, to security profiler in an airline. Okay. Then when I graduated, I became an auditor, tax auditor. It's, I'm not going to say the... Most boring one, actually it is not, because you're constantly looking for loops <laughs> that you can fill and uh, to see um, how they're spending, how the big companies are spending their money. It's really something different. Um, then I worked as a finance and administration manager of a startup. Now it is not a startup anymore. They succeed. And at the age of 30, you can say that mid the um, crisis, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, I wanted to be a chef. First, um, I said that I want to be a chef. Of course, my mother said, are you out of your mind? Mm -hmm. I said, no. Then the question is, I wanted to be a chef, but it's a big question mark if I can uh, be, become one or not. So I went to a course. And I said, I convinced myself that I can. Then I quit my job and went to Istanbul Culinary Institute. No, 
Uh, it's called um, MSA, Mutfak Sanatları Akademisi. It's Culinary Arts of Istanbul. Yeah, Culinary Arts Academy. Yes. So I graduated from there. And my internship was in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, although I didn't want uh, to work in a hotel. And at the end, it was, I'm a very lucky person. Uh, I thought that uh, I didn't want something, but at the end, I gained lots of things from um, working in a hotel because I was exposed, exposed to different things. Like the uh, dynamics of a uh, banquet buffet is different from a la carte restaurant, and each one has... Uh, differentiating points and so I started from that point I worked in several restaurants and uh, at the end I was working for Alancha it's um, I can say that it's um, kind of one of a kind of a restaurant uh, giving a tasting food a tasting menu I was working in research and development um, in the taste uh, testing kitchen, no, it was yes, it's uh, called test kitchen. Um, in the new materials, new tex textures of the food, and at the end, I found myself uh, giving expertise uh, as a consultant, and we met uh, Semi. Mm -hmm. uh, not only Semi, but uh, the other people uh, that is that founded the Cook Project. I think I um, I also bring something to the table, <laughs> like the uh, mathematical view and cost view of uh, things, because being creative with uh, um, with lots of money, it's easy. But when you have a limited money and you have to be uh, creative, it's something different. So. Everybody has uh, their own expertise, and, and I think my expertise is the cost side of everything. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, great story, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're also confused, You're right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, it's good to know, uh, or you know, it's good that we are talking about this because then uh, I want to come back to the uh, topic innovation because if you have uh, I don't know uh, that you know if you have almost like a multiple background right you know you don't only your background consists of different types of expertise different types of experiences you, you know and it includes different types of knowledge so when it comes to to create an innovation on anything then it's also important maybe not, not only have uh, flexible people who can uh, learn and invent at the same time, but also it is also important uh, to bring uh, people from different fields, from uh, people who have different backgrounds together to think about uh, on an innovative uh, project. But I want to ask you, uh, what does uh, innovation in food means? You know, uh, what is innovation when it comes to the food? You know. Okay. There must be uh, a lot of answers to that because it is also some kind of you know evolving, ongoing uh, creation, and it's related to the creative uh, uh, abilities of the people who are involved in this field for sure. But from your point of view, it depends on your curiosity. It can be anything and anything. It can be a new form of um, uh, a bottle, a water bottle. If you're curious about how you can grab a bigger bottle and uh, drink from the bottle, it depends on your curiosity. If you're uh, interested on the soil, the land, it can be a um, new fertilizer or um, it can be a new grain. And if you're interested in uh, food and cooking, it can be a new um, equipment, new oven. <laughs> It can clean itself, by the way. I like those. Yeah. <laughs> and Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> it can be anything. It can be uh, like a new uh, way of drinking uh, tea. Mm -hmm. A new mix of tea. It depends on your curiosity. Like um, uh, 
two weeks ago we had this uh, lesson from Mark J. Post. What uh, he's a doctor, by the way, he's a, a neurosurgeon, and uh, his expertise is to make artificial uh, veins. So, what he's doing now, he's trying to make um, using this uh, technique, trying to make a burger out of stem cells. A doctor that is making artificial vein now making a burger from stem cells so I think this is the innovation but you don't have to look very far or you don't have to be that much innovative uh, it is something that you have the idea of something you think that uh, this would be a better for you or people like you and if you can make it uh, come true this is an innovation but the idea not counts entirely <laughs> because yeah. everybody has idea uh, when they are taking a shower, uh, but uh, it's not enough. Um, for I don't know since when, but uh, for some time, food uh, became like a big issue, right? Uh, there are right now. Maybe, of course, because of my interest, because uh, I am looking in that field, you know, the field of startups, the field of creative production, etc. So there are lots of uh, different projects which are directly or indirectly related to food. And uh, um, I do have um, architectural education. You know, I have done architectural uh, <laughs> faculty and uh, I'm an architect. But... Uh, this reminds me of some kind of uh, interest related to green buildings or, uh, you know, they call it greenwash, right? So, yes. You know, if there is some kind of big interest who, uh, and also if a lot of people are focused on one topic, then there might be some, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, my mind starts to ask interesting questions uh, and questions the situation itself. Because uh, in a way, um, with all these climate change, um, you know, uh, decreasing resources, decreasing fundamental resources, basically, uh, makes the issue of food, uh, you know, something quite important at the end. You know, it will not only affect the ones in uh, environments which are, uh, which are lacking of resources, fundamental resources, but it will also, or it's still, you know, already it is affecting our lives in the cities, in the developed or, you know, underdeveloped or semi-developing or developing countries. I don't know how you can call them all. But, uh, you know, whatever we eat, you know, it also affects our, uh, our physical uh, being. It makes us sick. It makes us healthy. So that kind of focus uh, quite interesting me because uh, you know it makes me question things at the end so um, in a way all that food industry for example or production chains etc we will continue to talk about this kind of uh, topics by the way in the following broadcast but um, it is the it seems like the problem itself but of course you know it also you know uh, carries the um, solutions for proper questions um, what do you think about that? You know, how do you handle this uh, situation? Because you know, it is not only about creating um, something new or fancy uh, to consume or a way of consuming things, but at the same time, there are lots of social startups uh, related to food, uh, you know, like related to anything uh, nowadays. So how do you see this uh, uh, situation? Why food became uh, so popular um, again, you know? I think because people are desperate right now. <laughs> First of all, food is something that is everybody is exposed to. You're eating. You have to eat. <laughs> this is the... And um, you have to eat. That's it. And so everybody is related to food somehow. It doesn't matter if you're an economist, if you're an architect, but... At the end of the day, you're coming home and you have to eat something or when you woke up, you have to eat something to feel good. And what you eat is affecting you. 
like in 50 years ago, there was no, uh, as far as I know, at least, there is nothing called intolerances. Now everybody has issues. I cannot, uh, I cannot eat, uh, drink coffee, and this was one of the um, things that I like the most. I cannot tolerate grape. It means that no, um, most of the vinegars I cannot use, and uh, of course wine. It is coming, um, the, the source of it is the soil and what we, did, uh, what we did to the soil itself. It accumulated the things that uh, we cannot digest and it also accumulated in our bodies, in, in my mother's body, then it uh, uh, transferred to my body and now it can be something uh, permanent or it can be something that will go away in time. So right now people are desperate and we don't have enough space to, um, uh, to farm. We don't have uh, that much of uh, educated farmers so that they don't know how to deal with the soil itself. If you put uh, or if you grow potato every year, at the end of the third year or fourth year, the nutrients in the potato will not be sufficient because each time it is taking the same uh, nutrients from the soil. If the soil itself uh, is lack of that ingredient because last year it, uh, the potato consumed it, you cannot <laughs> take it anymore, you have to do something. You cannot uh, grow potato every year. So this comes with the education. But the, how it starts, um, you you found the problem and you're trying to solve it, but you don't know the long-term consequences of that uh, solution also. And they are saying that now it's the big thing. Uh, the cows are making lots of emission and so on. Uh, we shouldn't eat cows, but we should eat plants. Okay, but to grow plants again, you have to use lots of water, or you have to cut forest to plant. <laughs> to plant uh, some more uh, seeds. Yeah. Each time we're taking one, one problem and trying to find uh, a solution for that problem. And the long-term consequences, again, there will be another problem and we'll try to solve that problem. And people are social. Yeah. This is another thing. And uh, before that, people had a yeah. uh, lot more things to do. Like they would uh, go to the parks because they had time. Now we are in a uh, fast living uh, environment. Um, for example, in Istanbul. To go one pra from one place to another one, it will take uh, like an hour. So you're losing uh, like two hours in, in your car or in uh, public transportation. So <laughs> you, you don't have so much things to do. What you can do, you can go out if you want or you can um, ask from a website, and you can eat something with your friends. This is the social aspect of it, so that everybody is right now talking, if they, they want to socialize, they're not talking about what to do, but they're, they're talking about what to eat. Yeah. This is a new thing. Yeah, but they're not talking about what to cook. <laughs> no, yeah. because they, don't, they think, they think, that they don't have the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, change from cities to cities. Uh, yeah. If you were, if you would go to San Francisco, it, it would be something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Istanbul, for example, to order any kind of food is uh, relatively cheap. Uh, and convenient. Why, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why it makes it uh, also more tempting for the ones you know who who doesn't want to spend some time by, by preparing any kind of stuff. But at the same time, there are also some kind of movements, right? You know, to, to, which which uh, which promotes the act of cooking as a social gathering or act of eating, even. So there is also, you know, some kind of fundamental the social aspect of it at the end, uh, almost everywhere. Yes. But at the same time, for me, is the question: is well, how to produce more or what to produce efficiently? But at the same time, it is the question how to consume in a more sensible way. Because if you look at these numbers, you know, the amount of uh, goods that had been consumed 
in different parts of the world, then you see that actually there are uh, enough goods. You know, I, I mean, in, in, in terms of goods, I... Uh, I Ingredients. <laughs> food, yeah, uh, but uh, mostly food and food production. You know, when it comes to that, there are uh, almost enough, let's say, uh, products, but at the end, it is not... Um, it is not spread around Dis the world. Yes, distributed uh, correctly. Exactly. So uh, those kind of chains are also quite important, right? You know, not only what uh, what to produce, how to produce, but at the same time, how the whole uh, economic system works is also makes things uh, much more visible when you when you get into that uh, knowledge. Uh, most of the time, we are not exposed to that information for sure more complicated and it's also a boring thing if you if you compare it with a food recipe <laughs> or you, you know some kind of uh, if you compare it with some kind of gardening issue or something like that but there is that kind of aspect, that, aspect too yes and then this is also changing you have you have big corporations that wants to make profit at the end like when i was a child we had this uh, celebrations called Everybody should use uh, local food. <laughs> yeah. And I have a picture with uh, me being a banana. Yeah. And <laughs> now... <laughs> and, and, you were, and you were in uh, Dominican Republic? <laughs> no? <laughs> no, it's actually Anamur. It's, uh, okay. If it's Anamur, then it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to... Because I remember at those uh, at those special days in the school, some friends, uh, yeah, get get uh, this costume, costume, and at the end they bring a, a, a tropical uh, oriental. Yes, lychee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's quite. Hard. But but don't forget that the, the exotic essence of uh, lychee. You're bringing something that nobody knew. What's yeah. that? Can you, is, it, is it edible? Ah, oh, we are yeah. eating that one in the lunch every day. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. Um, Sorry, I just dropped it. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, before that, I mean, the, Turkey was considered as a self-sufficient country. But now, if you will go to a supermarket and if you will look at the um, uh, backside of uh, any uh, nuts, you will see that they are coming from... Uh, not even the same continent. It's coming from uh, South America. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is the problem. At the end, there are big corporations that want to make profit out of it. And uh, we have to find a way that they will embrace the, um, not totally, but <laughs> some part of the movement. Otherwise, uh, being very small and trying to um, hit a wall, it's... It, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There are some uh, bigger movements made by uh, supermarkets right now. They try to reuse the leftover food, and also they reconsider the chain that they created. You know, uh, the the supply chain basically. And uh, there are two as sorry to interrupt. There are two aspects of it. One is um, trying to use the waste wood. By the way, there. Are kind of not waste, but unwanted. Yes. They didn't become waste yet. Uh, it's, uh, it's a win-win situation. Because otherwise they have to get rid of the waste or unwanted. But this time, if they can make it something valuable, they can sell it again. Or they can uh, give it and they can... Um, it's not only the money, but the loyalty. Yes. Uh, they're going to take the loyalty. But again... It's, it starts with us. If I will go to a supermarket, if I will uh, see a bruised uh, um, tomato, and if I will not buy that bruised one because it has a bruise, it automatically gives the feedback to the supermarket that the ones with the bruise is not uh, selling. So from that point on, supermarkets are giving the same uh, feedback to the farmers. They're saying that, okay. If you're going to uh, send me uh, the tomatoes, send the tomatoes without the bruises or uh, send the tomatoes that are hard. Again, farmers are giving this to the seed manufacturers. 
And there, uh, like in Turkey, there was this uh, Çanakkale tomato that has very, very delicate skin. But right now you cannot find it because the ones with the delicate skin is uh, uh, 50% um, how do you say? You cannot use the 50%. It's uh, already bruised on the way. It becomes unwanted. Now, uh, you can find a Çanakkale uh, tomato with a thicker skin. And it's not a Çanakkale tomato anymore. <laughs> That's strange. It's also it's also requires to be uh, to be open to that knowledge too, right? Because, you know, if, for example, if I am a if I am someone who grow up in the system, basically, if I only see a chicken uh, in a in a plastic package, or if I only saw uh, tomatoes, or any kind of vegetables and fruits in in uh, supermarket stands, or even in the in the in the stands of uh, the markets because a uh, whole, uh, whole traditional market system in a way uh, goes parallel to those uh, preferences of the consumer at the end because people also uh, start to complain about the shape and the size and the, you know uh, long you know, low lasting uh, life or short lasting life of the, of the, of the, of the products so it is also a uh, question if you ask me you know, to to to, to allow that knowledge to the people, okay? Tomato, this shape, it, you know, it, it has a shape, but it can have various shapes and colors and everything. It may also taste differently, uh, this and that, you know, starting from that. But it also requires lots of curiosity again. Not only curiosity, we are not giving any emotional value to the food itself, the ingredients. It's meaning yeah. that the, we are... Um, judging it only by the uh, by the price yeah. uh, and people are right now you can see some people that can only eat meatballs but they cannot eat a uh, table steak because it looks like uh, an animal an animal okay. but if you will go to uh, to the rural places like the ranches and farms people will not um, will eat the last bit of everything like if they are um, cutting a cow they will eat everything and everything mm -hmm. with the tongue with the offals with the uh, eye uh, the nose the um, the legs uh, because this is the respect to the animal itself but once you once you think that it's a package good uh, package uh, meatball minced meat and it you don't have any emotional va value. It's, it's only uh, 20 bucks a kg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that kind of, in a way, distance um, from the source creates those kind of stuff too. Because if you can buy and consume things so easily, then also you don't think about the process that, that causes it to be produced. Or, you know, it's the same thing uh, related to the fashion products and the whole other stuff, I guess, you know, because uh, once I read that right now we can buy things so cheap, so we think that we are, in a way, rich or any kind of salary that we get, it is quite, um, you know, sustainable for us to live on, but basically uh, with, um, you know, low quality, any kind of product. It's we coming with the labor that... Exactly. Uh, Bad quality of lifestyle, and it also create an uh, an, an, an habitat and environment uh, for itself. So it's, it turns into some kind of ecology by itself, ecology of production and uh, consumption, basically. So if, if you if you distance ourselves from these uh, processes, then it is always uh, easier to make the decision and or, or get into the impression that yeah, I am eating meatballs because steak it looks like an animal at the end. So because even though it's the same thing, you 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 are you have the luxury to ignore it at the end. So this is also some kind of big big uh, question maybe, and um, yeah, difficult difficult issues by the way. Because yeah, we are talking about quite fundamental stuff related to, uh, like food, right? So it is yeah, but the <laughs> the change it's a, okay. It's a big words, but change start with you. If you go to a restaurant. 
and uh, usually the sizes are big. If you cannot eat it, you're leaving the rest uh, as a waste, right? They cannot be used, but you can take it at home and you can eat it like the day after. But nobody wants to do that, <laughs> usually. They don't want to take it as a doggy bag because it's, um, uh, let's say, um, at least in the Turkish culture, you cannot uh, ask uh, the restaurant, uh, can you, it, it shows that you, you are in need. But actually, you are not. Yeah. It's it, also it, kind of respect, right, to the to the food, because uh, there was those kind of quite strict uh, stuff uh, that that was coming from the families, family tradition. So you, know, you have to finish this, finish that, everything. You have to respect food. You have to respect the effort. Yeah. Because respecting food is also respecting the effort who ever prepared it. But. Um, <laughs> but in Turkish culture, it's uh, interpreted in in a wrong way because you have to respect the food, then you have to go and uh, take only the things that you need. In Turkish style, mother is giving you whatever she wants, and yeah. <laughs> she says that you have to respect and you have to finish that. But it's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is uh, that's a big problem too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the mother's vision. You know, I, yeah. I think it's everywhere. The same. You know, and maybe they don't force it that much, but uh, in 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 uh, eastern or southern uh, countries, <laughs> I think it is a common stuff. You know, people people uh, wants people makes you eat stuff to to show that they love you, to show yes. to, to see that if they respect you, if if they if you respect them, basically. So um, that happens. This is also yeah. not good stuff at the end, right? But, it's yeah, but that, that kind of hospitality I like. And I'm finishing all the food. At the end, at, at the end of the day, I'm um, trying to balance it with the um, mineral water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes even though it is painful, uh, it works, right? <laughs> at least to stay in the community. <laughs> yes, of course. It yeah. is, uh, it's something that you have to pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Shirley, thank you for being the part of the broadcast. It, it was a pleasure. Yeah, you will be here in uh, Paris. Yes. In a in couple of days. So maybe we can do uh, something next to, you know, by sitting next to each other and, you know, continue to, talk, continue to talk these kind of issues and maybe more. Yeah, it, have it would be great. Italy. Yeah, have fun in Italy and see you soon. Thank you. Take care.